and so you're going to set up an ender quarry. Yeah, I figure I might as well. I don't know how good this is going to do. Well, but... I can't remember how dense the crystal is, because we need crystal to get to the next rocket tier. Right. Technically, I need to start making all the other stuff, too, but I'm curious how it's going to get set up. It's been a long time since we set up Are you in your anus? Yes, I just followed you through. Oh, okay. I, I was so confused. I was like, why Why does, Why does? do I see Jeff here? Wait, what do you mean? Why do you see me here? I didn't. I couldn't figure out why you came to Uranus. Oh. Like I thought, <laughs> I thought, I thought you were still on Earth, and I was just confused. Like, why? Why am I seeing you? Like, I thought it was like a glitch, basically. So you're going over there. Oh, keep in mind. Oh shoot, we don't have a. I'll have to make us a um, uh, spawn or a chunk loader. Oh no, wait. The intercore is a chunk loader. Oh well, never mind then. Screw that chunk loader. I won't make no chunk loader. I'm really sad that the drill... Oh, there's a blood moon. Here? Uh, I just came back and it said blood moon rising. I'm curious what color oh. it's going to be oh, I at see. night. I was like, Uranus? Okay, what do I need for this thing? I need... Metallurgic iron plates. And tier one plates go on the top there. Because I gotta start making these plates again, and I don't remember the system at all. Right. <laughs> Just made this thing. I have no idea how it works. God, I, I knew how it worked that day. Right. I don't remember how this fucking intercore works. To be honest with you. I need. What is this? No. Oh, uh, can rest iron, meteoric iron. <laughs> the heavy duty plates. Let me get to this rocket again. And go all the way back to tier one plates. Okay, tier one plates are the heavy duty plates. So those with iron. With meteoric iron. Oh, yeah. Hitting the uh, night vision on the blood moon makes it not red. Really? Yeah, it makes things look a little funny, though, but... Oh, I just took out all the heavy-duty plates. We're going to be out of heavy-duty plates. That is annoying. Damn, I made a lot, too. That's crazy. Yeah, the Tier 1 plates are definitely... No, wait. Hold on. Metal iron plates. I have no idea if that was the right thing to do. Yes. Yes, it was. Okay, so they are now transferring appropriately down to the heavy-duty plates. And this one, I need the dash plates. Oh, no. It only unreads it for a little bit. <laughs> and then as it gets darker, it gets more red-ish. <laughs> Uh, that's annoying. Uh, that's funny. Uh, the dash plates go in. The carbon plates. Should probably get a lot more than just one. I'm like one at a time. Like, I need this plate. And I walk all the way <laughs> over here. Uh, now I need this plate. Oh, we only have 19 compressed carbon. What was compressed carbon? Uh, it's just carbon. You have to get carbon. Carbon ore and pyrothium dust? Uh, you don't have to. No, that's. You don't oh. have to do that. Just carbon ore. Oh, wait. I didn't actually. Oh, carbon ore with coal makes um, three of them, though. Yeah, yeah. That's what you want to do. Compressed nickel. Dude, where did the compressed carbon come from? Um, I don't remember what planet that was now. Right, 79, 28. Let's just think of it. If carbon is needed to make... Oops, wrong button. Just pallidum. 
Compressed carbon is used to make a tier four, so it's got to be a tier three planet somewhere. So it could be Mercury. No, excuse me. Venus. An asteroid. Venus or an asteroid? It's got to be Venus. Or, yeah. Let's go find out. Do I have... I only have one. Oh, well. There's just so many things that require so much things. <laughs> if that makes any sense. It's all the things. Damn it. I fucking... Oh, I forgot how shitty Venus is, too, with all these slimes. And... Oh, there wasn't caves on Venus, either, was there? I don't, I don't remember. There's, like, the lava all over this place. 1292, huh? Yeah, I gotta remember that. Oh. So, I've recently had some of the worst customer service in my entire life. Where at? At Sprint. Oh, yeah? So, it's really weird because I got a new phone because I've been out of contract and then my phone kind of uh, decided it was going to swim in the toilet. Oh, no. So, it... My my old phone, my, it was my old phone still, but I was out of contract, and I was like, you know what? Okay, time to get that new phone. You know that I've I've earned and am eligible for at this point. So I get get a new phone, comes in the mail. I activate it on like Thanksgiving, and later that night, I'm looking at it more closely when I was on the uh, the the black screen, the the lock screen essentially. And I'm like looking at it, and I'm like, dude, it looks like a hair that's across my phone. And I try to move it, and it doesn't move away. And I'm like, I'm like, Julie, is that a crack in this screen? And she looks at it and puts her fingernail into it, and she's like, yeah, there's a like a crack running across the front of this screen. And I was like, well, shit, I just got this new phone that has a crack in it. Um, that's kind of annoying. So the next day, I called Sprint, and I told them what was going on, and they were like, okay, you're within your uh, your window for satisfaction guarantee or whatever. You can take it to the Sprint store to get it replaced. And I said, you know, I order this thing by mail because there's not really a Sprint store that's very accessible for me to get to. I want to be able to somehow do this via mail. And the guy was like, no, the only way you can do this is at the Sprint store. So I was like, can I talk to somebody else who might be able to do this via mail because I don't want to have to go to the Sprint store? So he transferred me to somebody else. Who basically says, no, the only thing that you can do is go to the Sprint store and get it replaced and um, because you're within this window and that's the way it has to be done and you can't do it by mail. And I'm like, fine, okay, whatever. I'll make my way out to the Sprint store and get this thing replaced, but I have to go like now because I guess there's a four-day return policy on I think I, things like that happening. Oh, really? So I go to a Sprint store. I... Start telling the person behind the counter what's going on. And the first thing she says to me is, I'm sorry, sir, that you have to go to a corporate Sprint store. We're not a corporate Sprint store. We're a franchise Sprint store. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell does that mean? She's like, well, we're not owned by Sprint Corporate. We're owned by somebody else. I'm like, but this is just a straight up Sprint store. Like, you, you're, It's not like you're selling Verizon, T-Mobile. I'm not I like Radio Shack. Right. She's like, well, no. she's like, no, we're a Sprint store, but we're not a corporate Sprint store. Like, I'm sorry that they told you you could come to, the, you have to go to the Sprint store without specifying, but you have to go to the corporate Sprint store. But she looks up, and the closest corporate Sprint store is like, you know, only a couple miles away, but in DC traffic, it took me an hour and a half to drive there. Oh, wow. So I get to this corporate Sprint store finally, and I walk in the door, and I tell this person exactly what I told the other person. And I put my phone down and I said, look, you know, after I activated it, I realized. And she just looks at me and she goes, yeah, it's got a crack in the screen. And I said, yeah, you can see that now. That's why I'm telling you and that's why I'm here. And she literally, like, put her hands up in the air and backed away from it as if it was going to destroy her. <laughs> and she's like, I will not touch your phone, sir. And I was like, why not? Um, Are you afraid of it? 
I was like, what? What? And she's like, your phone came in with the crack on the screen. I will not touch your phone, which I started to kind of understand. Okay. She doesn't want me to be blaming her for somehow breaking my phone. Like, I get it. But I'm like, look, I've already talked to Sprint customer service. They know about the crack in the screen. They told me to bring it here to a Sprint store and get it returned and replaced. I wanted them to do it by mail, and they wouldn't do it. And she's like, no, sir, that's not how it works. They lied to you. What the fuck? And I was like, excuse me? I said, you're a corporate store, correct? And she's like, yeah, I'll talk to my manager, but that's not what we do. And she just walked to the back, comes back out like five minutes later, and goes, yeah, my manager said no. And I said, but I don't understand what you're telling me I should be doing right now then. And she goes, well, they lied to you, so you need to call them back and have them do it. And I was like, have them do what? And she's like, I, sir, I just told you I can't touch your phone. We can't take that back. It's damaged. I'm not saying you damaged it, but it's damaged. <laughs> and I said, okay, then. Will you call Sprint customer service for me then? And let's get this straightened out right now. Because they're the ones that are telling me to bring this to you. So if you're telling me that's not the case, let's call them from right here. And get this all straightened out. So they can't tell me to go to you. And you just tell me to go somewhere else. And she goes, sir, we're not allowed to call them for you. You can feel free to call them if you want. But uh, we can't call them for you. And I said, you're a store here to serve customers. I said, I am a customer that is here with a complaint. You're a corporate store. I was sent to you guys to do this. And you refuse to call Sprint customer service with me while I'm here in your store so we can get this straightened out. I was like, that's just what customer service is. And she's like, so like I said, you can feel free to call, but I can't do anything with this. So I'm not allowed to access your account. And she like walked to the back and didn't come back. There was somebody else that was there, um, but she like didn't come back for a while. So I literally made the other guy give me because they kept trying to point to all their model phones on the floor and telling me that they're all active. I should just use one of them to call. What the and hell? And I was like, I was like, can I just use your phone to call Sprint right now? And he's like, yeah, yeah. So I'm using the store phone. I was on hold and switched to three different departments because they kept all telling me at the store I'm on the phone with them. To go to the store and get it replaced. And I'm like, I am at the store and they refuse to touch this phone. And he's like, uh, well, let me transfer you to the next to your support then and see if they can help you at all. I was on the phone for an hour and a half. And in the end, what they ended up having to do was mail me a new phone. But they made the employees at the store access my account and put notations in my account in person to show that I was actually there and that they wouldn't help me. Wow. Wow. So they basically told the people at the store that they were fucking idiots, right? Well, they basically told the people at the store that they should have been doing that. And now they're having them note the physical like look of my phone so that when it could, comes back to sprint customer service, because they're not really supposed to take damaged devices back, I guess that they can say that like an employee looked at it and this is what was noted. So they can know what, like how bad the damage is or something like that. But yeah, because they, they told me three they transferred to three different people. Cause they all kept saying that they were supposed to, um, that I was supposed to go to the Sprint store and couldn't believe that I was there and nobody would, like, do anything. I honestly really don't think the policy was is supposed to be to go to the Sprint store. I don't think anybody just knows how to deal with it. I see. Like, nobody knows how to deal with it in the right way. And then the people at the store, I understand that if that's not really not how it's supposed to be done, then that's not how it's, how it's supposed to be done. But I grew up in a customer service day. I worked customer service for a very long time where if somebody walked in and needed help, I would get on the phone with them to get the thing taken care of. Right, right. Like, I don't understand how you basically are leaving me out to dry. And had I left like she wanted me to and called, I would have gotten nowhere because they wanted to talk to the representative like two or three different times. And at the store, yeah, it was just, it, it was a freaking nightmare. <laughs> Granted, you know, first world problems. It's a freaking nightmare dealing with my broken phone that I want replaced. But yeah, <laughs> but still, yeah, still, I want my phone replaced. And it not really makes me afraid of this phone because I don't know exactly when it got broken. I don't know if it got damaged in shipping. I don't know if I did something to it in the twenty four hours that I had it for. <laughs> you think you maybe did? Maybe maybe you are to blame. <laughs> well. It, who knows? Are our phones nowadays this fragile? 
Like, that's the thing that I'm concerned with. Right. I mean, I know iPhones. I see people that break them. Con- like, it, they drop it for, like, a, you know, an inch, and it shatters the screen. Well, the problem is the – it's not necessarily – I mean, a lot of them all use that same Gorilla Glass. It's, I think it's what it's called. Um, and then it's under so much pressure that if it gets hit on the corners, it just basically explodes. See, isn't that, like, for a device that's that expensive, for that to be the thing that you need to function is the screen? Yeah. Isn't there something wrong with that? I, I see your point. Because my old phone, I had the Samsung Galaxy S5, and I that thing has gone through hell and back, and besides dying because it finally went into a toilet after, you know, three years of use, I've dropped that thing so many times, and the screen looks pristine. Like, I had never broke a phone. Gl- a screen on one of my phones before, but I always I always put them in otter boxes. But then whenever I got the not the new iPhone, the one where they decided to remove functionality, um, the uh, the one before that, I guess the six or whatever. Uh, when okay. I got that one, they made it a little bit bigger, and I don't like bigger phones. Like I, so I didn't get a case for it because it made it even bigger. And uh, I dropped it once, and it shattered. That was a Disney, and uh, I got the I had got the the protection plan, so I went and got it replaced. And then the next week, when I was at Telltale, I forgot I put it on my lap when I was reading the newspaper. And, like, when I stood up to get out of the cab, like, it was still in my lap, and it hit the ground, and it shattered. <laughs> and still so, like... so they're just shattering that easily. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, and I, so you know, what, I, I got an otter box for this one. Uh, just put it in a case. Put it in an otter box. No, no, no. What do you do with all your shattered ones? Are, oh, are they, they take them back place? whenever you go get them replaced. How much does it... The Apple Care makes it where it's only like seventy dollars, I think, is what it is to get a replacement, or as opposed to like seven hundred dollars. Right, right. But you can only get two replacements, so I'm out of I'm out of replacement. I don't actually know what I'm going to do whenever. And this, there's something wrong with my phone. Like the battery dies really, really, really fast, and I don't does know it why. Die, does it shut off at thirty percent? No, but it'll it'll jump. It'll be like you'll be using it, and it'll say it's like seventy percent, and then the next thing you know, it's not. It's like twenty percent. Um, and then if you plug it back in, it doesn't jump to 30. Because I just read an article today about Apple apparently having a big problem with that. So they're doing like a, making an easier way for customers to return the phone. See, I saw that, that too. And I actually, right before we started recording, I went to their website where you can enter your serial number on your phone and see if your phone is one of the ones that are affected. And mine's not. Because I was wondering if like I if that's what was wrong with my phone. Because there's, there's definitely something wrong with my phone. Um you were more like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, really. And, like, I can't get text messages anymore. When I open up my iMessage on my phone, it just locks up. My whole phone locks up. Um, so I can't send or receive texts. Like, my phone is pretty much useless at this point. That seems problematic. Yeah. Yeah, it's really annoying. I thought I was reading something recently about the iMessage problem as well. Really? Now, oh, see, no, I, I got some viral video that somebody, like, embedded some code into that forces the phones to restart oh uh, oh uh, huh that's interesting yeah yeah i hate like i i hate that i'm so reliant on a phone nowadays and i can't know it's it, it works out well that i have three phones because of all the different businesses that i'm in you know all the drug dealing and all right the uh the, the hospital the fire department i have phones for all of those so when i lost my phone besides having to give people a different number to call me at i have a phone to use but still i need my phone to function because it's what everybody calls me on it's how i check my email most of the time you know and it's it's sad that they're that expensive and then they're that problematic to get fixed yeah. and replaced or things can happen to them so easily now i man, i don't know i wish there was a, a, a solution there is no solution there is not I've got 21 more carbons so i'm turning it into i wonder if there's an easy way to get efficiency enchants i need an efficiency enchant um well there is Wait, efficiency like just a, makes it faster, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, we're, we're using tinkers. Is there so like you don't an, truly use the efficiency and chance, but you use... No, I know, but um, for this speed upgrade, I wanted to go ahead and make the tier 3 speed upgrade because we're not using Silk Touch on that, on that planet. And for that, you need uh, two efficiency 5 diamond picks. Oh, you actually need them to make the yeah. thing. Gotcha. That's I problematic. Anything, I don't know yeah. how to help you with that. Mm. 
Okay. Yeah, this is only going to make 32 or 64 carbon plates. Did you see that... Uh... I, I hate to talk about politics, but did you see that Donald Trump is considering uh, Petraeus as the Secretary of State? I did not. It just, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's so good. You're so happy. It, I don't, you know, I, I don't care, I guess, but I think it's so ironic that we talk so much about, like, Hillary's email server and, and whether or not... Um, you know, she committed any crimes. And then let's appoint someone that was convicted of committing uh, a crime, of, of, of basically selling state secrets. Let's make him the Secretary of State. Why not? Uh, I mean, maybe that person will, will be able to get a special uh, task force, special prosecutor to go against <laughs> people. I think this auto-enchanting table might... Might let you do something. I think I don't Wait, actually. There's know. an auto enchanting table. Yes, and I think it might let you pick your enchantment. I don't actually know what it does. I've never actually made one before, so I'm gonna make one. Let me see what the fuck it does. Okay, I'm down to the next tier. Pressed Paladin, which we have plenty of. Going into it is the Paladin Plates. We're going to go into... What are these turning into? Here five plates. Put this downstairs near the books just because really? they might need them for all I know. Oh, magnesium plates are the next ones. Which <laughs> was just an easier process when you get down to a certain point of making these rockets. Like, Add this to this rocket, and it then becomes the next tier. Huh. I wonder what the fuck this does. <laughs> I made this out of a chanting table, and it just... I don't know what it does, dude. It's just a... It's a I think it might automatically apply enchantments without your assistance. I don't know where it gets the levels from, though. It automatically adds levels without your assistance? It looks like it. It looks like it'll. It, there's an option to auto drink XP, I guess. <laughs> auto drink. <laughs> hey, it can't do my job. <laughs> what finding? Okay. Uh, um, dungeons. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna end up with a decent amount of of tier six plates here. We need tier seven, right? Right. So, uh, but I've got us back to basically a stockpile of tier six blades. Gotcha. Essentially. This compressed carbon. Yeah. So, because then we just need the compressed crystal from the uh, the quarry. Do you have all that stuff from the quarry getting sent over here? Yes. I'm assuming. Huh. I don't know how this works. It looks like... Crystal stone. We got four of them. Yeah. Are you down below? I want to come see this yeah. thing in a minute here. Uh, yeah. I don't think it even needs table. books. I don't think you can Next manually level, enchant with it, honestly. 30. Auto extract, auto drink. Yeah, so I'm saying I think it I think it or auto eject. I think it um it uses you, like the liquid XP. Like not the XP bottles, but you know how we can put XP in in a tank by staying on a drain? Right. I think that's what it uses. I'm wondering, can it take an enchant away? 
Like if I, I don't know, if I put one of these books with protection two on it in here. In fact, somewhere I had auto extra a bunch of the XP berry bushes. I wonder what I did with those. Yeah, it literally just yeah, you're right. Um, can't you or is that that's essence, isn't it? I was gonna say the extractor from the syringe extractor, but I think that's essence. Yeah, the essence yeah. berries that you're talking about. No, you can do an extractor, a syringe extractor, and I think you take stuff from you. Oh. Like, but I think that's for, uh, that the mob. I think you're a mob essence. Gotcha. You know how you want to create mobs with the essence. I found seven of these essence berry bushes. It's not enough to make a good farm. Oh wait, you got you got a, a bucket of it over here. Thirty-nine ten liquid XP. Oh uh, yeah, there's a little bit, wasn't there? Yeah, not a crazy amount, but hey, it's some. Um, what if we can just put this thing in there? What if we just take this? I think you'll have to pump it in. You have to connect. Well, it. auto extract. Yeah, we're out of time. Let's we'll we'll play with this in the next episode. All right, guys. See you next time.